Welcome to the first of our series of discussions on Chapter 11. Chapter 11 involves electrons, and we're going to first, in order to understand electrons, we're going to have to look at waves. We need to understand some characteristics of waves. Ooh. And so I'm going to draw a wave on here. We'll look at a cool, actually moving wave here in a second, but let's just talk about some of the general characteristics of waves. Um, first of all, waves go up and they go down uh, above this thing we call a zero line. Zero line is not really part of the wave, it's just something that we can uh, kind of use to describe where the wave is. And so the wave goes up and down and up and down. And so the top part of the wave is called the peak, or more often it's actually called the crest. Either word is fine, those words are interchangeable as far as I'm concerned. And the bottom part, the lowest part the wave gets to is called a trough. The height of the wave is the distance from that zero line to a peak. And so, and that has a special name that's called the amplitude. <coughs> and then uh, there is a certain distance that you could measure from the peak of one to the peak of another and that is called the wavelength now so the distance that uh, a wave travels as it goes through a cycle that distance is the wavelength it's measured in meters now this is a little bit more interesting if we watch it dynamically in other words if we watch it move around and ooh, here we are here is our animation we can see this wave we can see it going up and down and 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 we could bring out our ruler and we can measure the distance from peak to peak and we see that that's about um call it i would say that right in there is about 38 38 38 and a half centimeters there the amplitude we could also measure. We could measure from the zero line to the top there, and that would be, looks to be about eight centimeters. And so we can get it going again, and we can see how the wave's going up and down and up and down. We can actually change the amplitude on this if we like and get it really tall or really short. Make it really short. We can also change this other aspect of it it's called the frequency we haven't talked about the frequency so let's do that the frequency is a measure of how many waves pass per second and so currently the frequency is set at 43 so if we increase that number we should see more waves pass per second um, and we can do that we can actually see what we mean by this if we clock it if we time it so I'm going to count waves that go by in 10 seconds. So try with me if you will. I'm going to start when I see one and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And so in about 10 seconds I saw about 16 waves. So 16 cycles per 10 seconds. I might have miscounted, but that's not really the point. Just know the definition. And so that would be 16 divided by 10 is 1.6 cycles per second. Now there's a term, we don't usually say cycles per second. Uh, we use the term hertz. 1 hertz, H-E-R-T-Z, is 1 cycle per second. So if we say 60 hertz, we're saying 60 cycles per second, or in other words, 60 waves would pass by every second if that's what we were doing. So, if we go back and do this again, we can see another really, uh, this is a really, maybe the one of the most important things that you're going to learn from this, uh, aside from just your basic definitions, and that is the relationship between wavelength and frequency. So currently we have a frequency of 43, and we see that the wavelength is uh, whatever we said. I think it's still about, uh, and by the way, whenever we say the frequency is 43, we don't actually mean 43 
cycles per second that's just kind of an arbitrary value uh, basically it goes from 0 to 100 and we can set it so it's about halfway between the lowest setting and the highest setting is all that means there's no unit on that uh, on that measurement and so let's look at the frequency let's raise the frequency and think about it for a second I'm going to pause it think about what's going to happen if we raise the frequency what is going to happen to the wavelength the wavelength is currently about 38 and what's going to happen if we make more cycles per second all right got your prediction and now let's go let's play it again now let's raise the frequency you can see that they're coming out a lot faster now and if we pause it and we measure it you can see already of course that they've gotten closer together it's gone from 38 down to 21 centimeters so the effect of raising the frequency was to lower the wavelength similarly if we lower the frequency the opposite effect should happen you can see the wavelengths are getting really long now the distance from one peak to the next peak is much longer than it was a minute ago so we can summarize this uh, in one way we can say that um, for waves that are going at a constant speed we know <coughs> that if you raise the wavelength then that tends to lower the frequency and vice versa in other words if we raise the frequency we would lower the wavelength there's a special four dollar word for this to say that if one thing goes up and the other goes down and one uh, we say that they are inversely proportional if one goes up and the other goes down as we have with wavelength and frequency the two things are inversely proportional they're directly proportional if they go up together but as you can see back from our video as we raise the frequency we make them go faster and faster and you know come more and more often they get bunched together and their wavelength gets smaller so whenever we talk about waves we can talk about their wavelength and their frequency yeah, Randy, go to the office.